there was a change. There was a change where I, I talked about it with you for a little bit, how I started changing my my own, how I th- how I think. And it was a point where I just stopped caring. I just, I stopped caring about others and I stopped caring about just in general. Tony, how you feeling? Better. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, how the sound? Sounds good still. Yeah. All right. Is it recording? Are we live? Yep. We live. Oh, we live. We live, baby. We live. We live. Welcome back. Welcome back, y'all. Y'all Everybody. know how it is. Room one on one. Roll that intro. Woo. How'd you like that intro? <laughs> it was nice. Yeah, it was nice. We worked real hard for it. Yeah. Did I use proper? It doesn't matter. Um, you, never mind. Uh, hey man, this is episode two hundred five. Yo, we're actually doing it. We're actually making it. It's nice. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. We, we're consistent, boys. We're consistent. We are consistent. Uh, as we've been talking about the past couple episodes, we are work consistent. smarter, not harder. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that too. That too. Be more goal go, 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 oriented. That's all, again. folks. Try it again. What'd you say? Be more goal oriented. Oh, goal oriented. That's I, what I meant. I thought you were gonna orientated. say goalable. Interesting. Be more goalable. Interesting. <laughs> but in today's special episode, we are sponsored by Ed. no more Pringles. <laughs> Insert. Pringle King. We're not sponsored by Pringles, by the way. We're not. We're not. We're not. But the song we're going to talk about today is about Pringles. Oh, oh sorry. It's about. No, it's because you were already taking a long pause, so I thought you wanted a drum roll. Anyways, talking about our song Pringles in the Morning. That's what I do. This song got me grooving down in my shoes. I staring at me like, who's that dude? I just shrug my shoulders while I buzz the movie. Yeah. I can spit it. I can. Woo. Man. <sighs> Do you guys like Pringles in the morning? Do you like eating Pringles in the morning? You like them in the evening? Doesn't matter what time I'm eating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My Pringles in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> My Pringles in the morning. <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> so, Pringles in the morning, how did that come to be? <clears throat> I'll story. take it. Oh. oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. In our audience, does anybody else want to say it? Anybody? Uh, anybody? Anybody? Free mic, free mic. Oh, oh, me, 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 me. Yes, 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 yes me. Oh. Not you. I'm more important. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have a live audience again. Yeah, we have a live audience. We always have a live audience. Hey, I saw that. I whoa, saw whoa, that. whoa. You got to put the body like that you're, right you're, behind the camera? That's no, up. she was saying we were number one. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, with yeah, the wrong yeah. finger. All yeah, right, but. Hey, some people don't have all ten fingers. Um... Oh. He made me a ninja turtle. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. 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 Uh, Much love to uh, the live audience. Holy, holy heck. cow! Okay, so uh, <laughs> Pringles in the morning. That was my idea. So to set the Move. the scene. Oh. <laughs> Set the Stop move. trying to fill in the blank. This ain't, <laughs> you suck you're trying to ad lib over here, bro. <laughs> you cannot play that game. <laughs> I walked into basketball practice back at. Sorry. <laughs> he got excited. You good? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sam, take it. I man. walked into practice. <laughs> like season one all over again. <laughs> back in high school, I walked into practice and uh, I, I, I saw one of my teammates. It was an early morning practice. Uh, I walked in at like 5 45, and he's sitting there eating. Pringles. And I was like, well, first of all, I was like, dude, why are you eating? You were about to run to death. Like, you're going to throw up. But then my second thought was, wait, why are you eating chips in the morning? Like, that doesn't, who does that? 
it? Oh, who yeah, does yeah. that? Do that Anyways, oh, does most that people then? don't be like, wake up, be like, you know what? I want some Pringles this morning, or I want some Lay's, or whatever. So I always thought that was weird, and I didn't think much of it. But then, like, I think, I don't know, I was thinking about it or something eventually, and <laughs> I was like, that's kind of, it's weird, but to him it wasn't weird, because when I was like, dude, why are you eating Pringles in the morning? He was like, bro, like, <laughs> like leave me alone. Let me do my thing. This is my pre-practice snack. Like, I've eaten Pringles and just, like, back off. And you probably said some other things I won't say here. But I, won't. I was like, fair. <laughs> <laughs> and so that I just was like, well, that, that's just interesting that we all do weird things um, or just things in general that, like, I, what some, some of the stuff I do in my routine of, like, how I live my life isn't what Josh does. Nah. And Josh might look at it like, when I put creamer in my cereal, he's probably like, dude, that's... <laughs> I've never the thought about that. that. <laughs> like, I would like, never think about that. That's weird. Though. Doesn't that go in, like, coffee or hot chocolate? I'm like, yeah, but I grew up doing it in my cereal. You know what I mean? So it's just like, we all do these weird things, but, like... Does it taste good? Cere- like, creamer in cereal? Yeah. Yeah, I tried it once. I like it. You never tried it again. But yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of... It was too sweet for me. I was... Yeah. It's it's a different kind you of got sweetness. It, well, you've got to... <laughs> like, chocolate sweetness next to, like... You've got to put the right amount in, dude. Yeah. Them Tim Tams? The Tim Ooh, Tams. Tim slapping, Tams. Bro. I'm, so, I'm so glad I showed That's you. That's a whole other so kind of sweetness. Fire, Yo, we showed you. We need to show you what Tim Tams are. They're... Oh, but, oh, but right how way? to eat them? Have you eaten them the right you way? You do not know how to tim the tams. Explain to me yeah, how to eat a tim tam. You be Go. tamming the tims, but not timming the tams. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What? 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 No! Hold on! Oh, wait, 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 wait! Explain. What the heck? Who taught oh. you that? One of the boys. No freaking way! No way! Tupo, you're also I'm peeking. Sorry. Yeah. The excitement. Damn! Sorry. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, when it comes to... She food, knows how to tim the tails, bro. She can tim. Dang, that's she crazy. Can... Hey, respect. Respect. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I showed them and they loved it. Yeah. I showed her she didn't really like She was like, oh, I just have one. It's fine. There's probably... <laughs> too much chocolate. The, the, the hot chocolate is too hot. <laughs> She liked it. Anyways, back on the topic. <laughs> Man, this sounded like season one, bro. It's nice. All right. I um, love how you keep bringing it up. <laughs> Ayo, this sounds I feel like, like I'm in season this, one. This sounds like season three. Yeah. We're back in my For basement. For those of you who are just listening, yes, we are making <laughs> <laughs> That's three. Yeah, so that's how I came up with the idea of Pringles. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Short so then years long. down the road, I talked to him about it. Like, oh, that'd be a sick song idea. Mm-hmm. And then eventually we got around to working on it for the 12 for 12. Yeah, so when it came to B, I was like, man, I was listening to a Surface song. I'm like, dude, we can make this into like, you know, Pringles in the morning. So, trying to like mimic it the best way we could, uh, didn't really work out. Tell them, tell them about the process. Man, <laughs> man, oh, yeah. don't get me this started. Is, this is the first song that Tonu came in as a member, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Wait, but real quick, originally you wanted the song to sound like a. What was the... Because... No, never mind. I'm thinking of Tidal Waves wanting it to sound like Waited in Your Water. Yeah. 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 That's another song we'll need to talk about more. But... Someday. But... (laughs) Yeah, that's what... (laughs) Going back, Tony Tony was part of this song. Go ahead, Tony. Tell him about the process. Yeah, well, uh, like you said, he wanted like a surface song. I don't know how many surface songs we listened to. (laughs) Only three. (laughs) I was trying to... I was trying to get into the vibe because I, I I never knew surface songs existed until I mean I didn't know they existed I just didn't know they were called surface songs. The disrespect. All right. Disrespect. No, he's a disrespect. Okay, Tupo. Anyways, he says. Yeah. I just I just made a couple of like beats, and see if it, if Tupo like. Like if if it kind of sounded surface to Tupo or to you guys, and I mean I I made a lot of beats and yeah, you did. it just it j- I just couldn't match the the vibe of a surface song. Uh, it was just well I wouldn't like, say I I wouldn't say you didn't catch the vibe of it because the the original beat it, it was very like surfacey, but it just didn't fit the. Like a, the, the original melody for. that we wanted for for Pringles, like it like sounded off or something, and then we just felt like 
it wasn't the vibe. Like, granted, down the line, we probably will use that that beat or something, but it just wasn't, like, calling to us, saying, like, this is the instrumental for Pringles, or this is how Pringles is going to sound, you know? Mm-hmm. It came <coughs> to a point where we were like, man, Pringles is not sounding like what, like what we wanted to sound, what Josh was saying. And so from there, we kind of, like, took it and we're like, scrap that. Try something else. It was it was an adjustment, right? It was an adjustment. Sorry, it was an adjustment. Wow. Bringing it back to season one, as yeah, people well, would say. I mean, uh, <laughs> before, before we, 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 we uh, changed, we procrastinated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one kind of became a time crunch, but not as bad. Yeah. Yeah. We made that in a week. Mm-hmm. It was tight. Good day we made in three days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> why are you laughing, man? <laughs> but two, uh, when we were like reconfiguring it, I think I think I found a guitar loop, and I was like, let's just. I don't think we sat there and was like, that's Pringles. I think mm-hmm. I just found a guitar loop, and like, I don't know, let's try this. It sounds kind of cool. And then Tony built the drums around it, and I think yeah, we just kind of we went with it. Mm-hmm. That for sure. You yeah. you came up with the lyrics of like the chorus and everything too. It was crazy. Yeah, I remember that. I was standing in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. I was like, what do you guys think yeah. about this? And I had it like way longer than it was, too, mm-hmm. so I just I was, cut off. Yeah, cut off this and cut off that. Just keep that as a chorus. And I was like, say less. Yeah. So I think I still have the recording of that. I came in. I was like, y'all figure out the, the chorus or something? And then y'all just looked at each other. I was like, let yeah. me record this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. And it fit. And Next thing you know, we we're off to the races writing our verses. Yeah. Nah, very so cool, very cool. from one beat to another beat, how did we, how do I want to question this best? How did we adapt to each, um, <laughs> from one ver- from one instrumental to another? How did we, like, flip the, my questioning flip right now was, about, yeah, there you go. How were we able to make such a dramatic shift, yes. right, into something that sounded completely different than what you'd already work on for the past two weeks, mm-hmm. right? So I think Tony could probably better answer that question because you, not only before we made the final change, you made, you grind on that thing trying to help Tupo bring his vision into, into what, well, I don't know. Light. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So like what, you were constantly changing and doing these different things and like, like, just what was that experience like for you? Uh, that experience, I mean, it was a bit stressful. Uh, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it was stressful uh, with the, with just making beats. But also, uh, it it didn't really bother me at all because I, I love drums, mm. like making beats. And so when you guys first, like, asked for my help um, in, like, making beats, I was like, okay, let me show you guys what I can do and, and and so we worked on the beats, and then Tupo's like, I like that, I like that. And then when we make it, and then we try to put it together, it didn't sound well. And so um, usually we just like keep like adapting to the changes that we have to make because um, I mean adapting is something like that's big for me mm-hmm. because uh, when I was working as a, as a customer service representative. Um, when we're like talking to people, um, usually they update a lot of stuff in the software because they don't want to, they want to like make the software better. And so when they update the software, we got to teach him, um, like, cause we, I usually follow a script and usually I would have to change that script according to the software update. So adapting became a big thing. Um, also when COVID happened. Like, we all had to start wearing masks mm. and, um, you know, hand sanitizer. How no, I, no, I was just thinking how constantly my mom, like, every five seconds, <laughs> felt like my mom would whip out the hand sanitizer and yeah. slap it on her hands. Hand sanitizers them. and the disinfectant wipes and all that. Uh-huh. So um, that, 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 that uh, was part of, like, how... I learned how to adapt to, like, changes. And so when we were working on Pringles in the morning, I was kind of, like, used to, like, changing things up, uh, even though it was, like, a, a bit stressful, but it, it was something I already knew how to do. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> yeah, for this, <laughs> no, for this song, I felt like it got me more into <laughs> like getting my hands on the beats and everything. Honestly, I felt like that's when there, that was during the time when we made that reggae beat for it. Mm. That was the, during the yeah. same time. I was like, dude, he yeah. helped me out with that a lot. I was like, dude, can you play this? And he played it. I was like, I'll bet. And I was like, and then he added like the drums to it and everything. And that, I feel like that's where it kind of kicked off. And I was like, all right, bet Pringles. We can do Pringles too. Mm. And since then, we've been making more beats and we've been making more samples and everything. And I feel like it's been sweet since yeah. since like we've been adapting to the change, you know? getting out of our comfort zone and trying to be more, you know, out there. Yeah. I think Tyler Joseph said it pretty well in, in, in terms of songwriting and creating music. He says is you reach a point where the song, you have to let the song go the direction it wants to go. Um, and I think we kind of learned that with Pringles. We took this 180 shift, and so it's like, okay, now we have to adapt to what we just shifted to. We have to be like, okay, maybe the original way we sung the chorus, the melody, now it has to change because it doesn't it doesn't fit here anymore. Yeah. And so now it's like, okay, find a new melody. And I think Pringles just started to to write itself. Cause and that uh, that's happened with the song after as well. Mm-hmm. But I think there's a point, there's an acceptance. I I guess you could call it the acceptance process. You accept how things are and where they're going. And then you play your role in that. Okay, the song wants to go this direction. Let me see how I can support in that way and, and add to that and make it better. And so I think that that's a part of adapting. And that's how we adapted to the change. All right. Uh, <clears throat> just to go back on, on you real quick, I would also say with the creative process of this song, it also like really boosted your what's the word enthusiasm i guess as like not just in the group but also like music making because we always talk about <clears throat> like us helping you to make beats but it never like really happened you know yeah but in the process of this you went and started working on other song ideas that you've had months ago but like started to record them started working on a lot of beats with this guy. But so so I, I think that also, like, had that whole mindset change for you as well. Um, <clears throat> I would say for me, just because of the way how how it vibed and the, just the flow, like, how easy we wrote the verses. Because like, like you said, we wrote the song in a week, which, like, blew our minds, especially for how good it sounds. Granted, we forgot something, but... <laughs> <sighs> Don't put we, that on us. No, no, no. <laughs> I said we. I said we. All right, we as a Nintendo. Uh, but um, it was. It was <laughs> I hate myself sometimes. <laughs> but uh, Michelle, that's was your it? boyfriend. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ah, that's sweet. Uh, <laughs> At least somebody loves you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember the first episode? My thing? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I saw myself. <laughs> but, but, like, just, like, how fun it was writing the verses with each other, you know, instead of us just doing it at our own time. Like, hey, this is what I wrote. We were writing it then and there with each other, fixing it. And then when, when we got to recording and, like, started doing, like, stack vocals, adding the the ad libs and stuff that was fun like we really, that, that really like got us back into into the why we were doing it you know yeah like so I think with that and then with uh, with Smile and then now the songs down the road that we will be writing it's gonna like we can totally do this so let's let's do it you know just like write a song with a theme or topic but have have fun doing it cause because if, if you're enjoying it and you're recording it while having fun, you can you can feel that. The listeners can can feel that for sure. So that's very important for me, at least. Mm-hmm. To this day, my family loves Pringles. Like, that's a, it's their favorite song out of all the songs you've dropped. To this day? Even though it's been like a month? No, yeah. to this, till Dude, this no, day. Dude, no, my mom... Till this day. My this mom day. legit first, like, actually listened to Pringles the day we dropped Smile... And now it's been stuck in her head for the last couple of days. Yeah, um, <laughs> I went. I went to uh, my friend, brother. Uh, my brother. Uh, yeah. His uh, his sister graduated. Oh, and we went yeah. to his party, and I don't know where we just we're just sitting there like 
just chatting, and we hear it playing in the background. Like, what? Let's bro, go. it caught me off guard, bro. Yeah, it, it caught, caught me off, me off guard. He too. played it. I was like, hey, yo. <laughs> Pringles is so good. Oh, um, my, bro. Love that song. That's, I think that's a song that's close to... If we if you had to slap a sound, be like, this is what last note sounds like, Pringles would be the oh, closest, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Just because it's it's vibey. It's us. It's fun. Yeah, it's just us having fun. We love it. So that's why I'm we excited for, for barbecue as well. That one's yeah, gonna barbecue's going to have a similar vibe to it, I think. Yeah. Um, but, no, yeah, I, Pringles was so much fun to make, and I I don't know. I, I That gave us, all of us, a lot of confidence. Because that's also, I think, the first song that we really, like, almost built everything from scratch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, ground foundation, like, we used one loop the guitar loop and build everything around that and what we wrote and everything and so I think we gained a lot of confidence and that was a shift we I, like after Pringles there has been a shift oh yeah and how <clears throat> Tupo the way you be grinding on making beats and other things Tone was out here grinding understanding like okay this is you know this is how you even use the software like you're coming in never using it before same thing with you like we feel more confident in everything else and, like, mixing and, like, creating uh, whatever, and that's how Smile came to be, but um, the change, we, we, we've we changed and we've rolled with it. It's been a good change. So my question is, let's look at it from the other angle. When things change and it's not such a positive thing, how do you adapt to that? Scenario, right? Not a specific scenario, but um, there's things that happen in life that we just can't control. You know, you can go to the extremes, losing somebody, doing all these different. That's a huge dramatic shift. Like, how do you, how do you adapt to that? You know, not that specifically, but yeah. these negative things <clears throat> that life brings on that are completely out of our control. Um. I would say for me personally, because I feel like that's happened a lot, you know. But <clears throat> with those experiences, and then uh, what I reached to, I, I told y'all about it. <clears throat> I, re- I reached a, a point in my life where, like, I'm just looking either at, at the mountains or, or the sky, or just looking looking at the little things and like focusing on the on the little things. And I filled with so much joy that. Granted, even if I do think of a big negative uh, moment in my life, like I'm like, it's crazy that I went from there to where I'm at now. You know, just focusing on on the on the the little things. You know, the because <clears throat> granted, um, I don't. Know, it's kind it's kind of like like a puzzle. You know, like you're you're all scattered and all that. But once you take the time to like focus on the little things, put in the little pieces, then you'll have like the the picture that you've been trying to build uh for who knows how many hours cuz I don't know how many puzzle pieces I have but um it's like it's just focusing on the little <laughs> things so that way when you get to again another cuz I'm only 24 I've hopefully a lot more time ahead of me but <laughs> but <laughs> but I I know for a fact I'll reach another point where I'll probably be at an all-time low again or reach a moment much <clears throat> uh, more difficult than my previous one but knowing that I was able to outrun that one I can do it again focusing on like my family my friends like all, all, all this other stuff you know mm-hmm. so that that's my take um, I think with me um, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into much like details but uh, I I I don't know, I was just, like, stuck. Like, I don't know, I said it in another episode where I was basically living in a garage and trapped and stuck. And that's because I went through a, a change that I wasn't ever expecting uh, to happen. But um, uh, I had, you know, nightmares several nights. Um, having issues trying to adapt to that kind of change and and it it wasn't it wasn't a big change because like where I was staying is, um, you know, first of all I lost my job, and um, I didn't want to talk to anybody, 
So that I think that would count as like a negative change. And so I was just uh, closed off to the to the world. I think was how you describe it. But um, it, it's it was really tough to get out of. You know, like adapting to a uh, kind of change like that it impacts you negatively, um, mentally. You know, physically. Um, but. I wouldn't say I've adapted to that change. Um, I mean, I've adapted now, like m living here with you guys, you know, everything changed. Uh, th this was a positive change that I'm grateful for and, and I appreciate and, and love because I'm here with you guys making music, um, doing this podcast. Uh, and, but the, the negative change that happened, I, 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 w I, would, I wouldn't want to... Um, what do you say? What's the English word for that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't speak Samoan. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want to experience it again. But I mean, it's not like we, we have control over it. It may happen again, but um, I think the, the, the way to adapt to is just keep fighting, you know? Keep fighting um, for what you for what you want and what's best for you and all that negativity just either you let it drag you down or you learn from it um, and then I chose to learn from it and grow from it mm. uh -huh. yeah let me are you, are you done you yeah finished? I'm done okay <laughs> <laughs> were you about to say something Josh or was somebody about to say something no go ahead okay were you about to say something Good. Okay, mine will be quick. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. All right, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We are products of our environment. Um, that's not what defines us, but our environment contributes into the building of who we are as people, right? Um. We're not defined by our past, right? Sometimes we, we carry a lot of baggage. We, we try to bring our past into the present, whether it's involuntarily or, or whether we choose that, right? And so I, I, but I, I honestly think the way you adapt to these negative experiences, yes, there's a point in time where, where there's grief, for whatever the case may be, there's a point in time for mourning. There's there's a there's a time for, um, you know, to live with what happened. And, but you reach a point where you have to walk away. It doesn't mean you forget. It doesn't mean you turn it into something that's no longer um, significant. But you reach a point where you have to walk away. And it doesn't, and that doesn't necessarily happen in an instance. Sometimes it's a lifelong thing to walk away. I think that's how you adapt is you accept what happens. And that experience, you know, contributes to who you are. But ultimately you have to walk away and point yourself and your life in a different direction. And you let that experience be a strength, not not something you, you carry, and that that and it's easier said than done. Um, like I said, I, I know people that we know people that are dealing with things and have dealt with things for years. Um, but you happiness ultimately is some sort of choice you make. And it's a choice you have to continually make. And accepting how things were, how they are, but also having the vision of where they, where you can go and, and fighting for that. Yeah. I, I just want to add to what you said. There's a, a song uh, by Whit Lowry where he has a line that he says, just because we have a heart doesn't mean we have a heart. Just because we made mistakes doesn't mean that's who you are or who we are. 
it's like just connecting with them like our our past doesn't define who we are it's all about like uh, adjusting readapting if we need to just the person that we want to be that we become that that we want to become that we see ourselves to be in the future doesn't matter at, at whatever point in your life that you are right now there's there is a chance for you to change it to be to go down a path that you want to go but always depends on on yourself yeah what's in your control what's not in your control um and tupo you had something i think sorry oh no just uh, there's a quote that i always um i said a lot my senior year well to myself but i said don't live in the past learn from it it's just simple words it's like like what y'all just said summary just don't live in the past just learn from it because it's not in your control you can't change the past and i feel like once you understand that you will progress more and you learn from it you learn from your own experiences and yeah I remember, <clears throat> I remember, the end of last year, beginning of this year, I, well, I there was a change. There was a change, where I, I talked about it with you for a little bit. How I started changing my my own how I how I think, and it was a point where I just stopped caring. I just I stopped caring about others and I stopped caring about just in general. And it was weird because it was a change that I felt like it was needed for me because I felt like I cared too much. I felt like, I was like, man, I put too much care into into the world. I feel like I shouldn't care anymore. And honestly, I thought it was a good thing for me. Uh, but in the long run, it wasn't. And I feel like when you do make those changes in your life, I feel like you should talk about it. You shouldn't just keep it to yourself. I feel like you should tell the people that truly do, that truly do care about you. Those people will definitely help you out, and those people will definitely help you get your head on straight. Yeah. That reminds me of, I think I told you guys about this before. You know the scene. There's a scene in <laughs> The Walking Dead, oh, of yep. all things. Oh, yep. Sponsor us. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> um, I think it's, like, <clears throat> one of the most beautiful scenes, at least mm. for me. And it's it's a point where there's a character that, there's two characters. They're two of the main characters that end up being stuck together, getting separated from everybody else and they're stuck together for a while. And they never particularly had a very close relationship. And through their experience together, spending maybe a few days or a few weeks together, they had a lot, they fought a lot and they, you know, whatever. But they also ultimately learned to care deeply about each other and they developed a very beautiful relationship. And then ultimately in the show, uh, one of the characters gets kidnapped and... The, the other character just kind of does all he can to find her, but he, he couldn't. And so he just kind of moves on. Fast forward, he the, the main character, or the guy gets uh, reunited with the rest of the group, and they find out where who kidnapped this other character. That's a part of their group. And so they go to, to get her, and they eventually get to it to the point where they're, she, she's with them again while they're facing this other group. And through their whole process of talking, this she ends up being killed right in front of them. And so then a few weeks later, they're back as a group, just kind of traveling. And this character just kind of, he, he closes himself off completely. He was already kind of a closed person, mm -hmm. but now he's just like closed off completely. Um, struggling with this thing. And, and one of one of the other characters who's really good friends with him already, she has this, a few conversations with him where she essentially tells him, you just, you need to accept what happened. You need to, you need to feel it, I think is what she says. Something like that. So there's this beautiful scene where he goes off, off road and, and he's in the woods and he finds this like cabin that he, he sits down and is looking at this cabin in the view. And this dude whips out a cigarette right lights it and like takes a puff and he's just sitting there like with a blank stare and then he just kind of takes a cigarette and like puts it on his hand and it just like burns a little hole 
And then he just breaks down and starts like crying because mm. he was finally accepting that he actually cared about somebody and he was actually dealing with it finally. And so it's just cool how symbolically him burning himself was him starting to feel again. And so long story short, um, I think our natural reaction is to live in the discomfort. As much as we don't want to, trying to change ourselves and to, to react differently and to move on is hard. And because it's hard, we live in the discomfort. And sometimes it, it's such a weird thing. Sometimes we crave the attention, but we don't want the attention. Mm. And so, but sometimes I think we just, you have to be with yourself and you have to feel it. But the important part is you don't get stuck there. It's that you, you get up and you walk away. I live with it. I felt it. And parts of it may come back to me. But you then have to change yourself. And that's a process. But you ultimately have to change what's in my control, what's not in my control. And you choose. You have to choose to to go on to greener pastures, I think. Easier said than done. Say that much. Most definitely, too. But it's not impossible, no matter the circumstances. That's true. Mm -hmm. Just because it's hard doesn't mean it's impossible. Good friends helped you, right? Very close brotherhood. It could be people in your lives and letting them in and letting them support you, you know? It could be music. Music was an outlet for all of us. Mm -hmm. Basketball was an outlet for me. Just using, there's so many different tools and resources in everybody's lives that you can just utilize to help you change and to help you deal with negative change. That was that was good. You can add that effect. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just a mic. Just yeah. <laughs> mic <bump. laughs> nice. Man. Man, we got deep into that one. Holy yeah, deep. we got pretty Pause. deep with that one. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But any last words, boys, to wrap this up? Words. And- <clears throat> Everyone go down the line, starting with Josh. These. No. <laughs> 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 Almost got him. <laughs> no? That's it for me. I feel like. What, going off what you said, live in that com- uh, discomfort zone. Live in there because uh, that's how you grow. That's how you move on. And just and it may be hard. Just because it's hard doesn't mean it's impossible. Where'd you pull that from? No, I'm just kidding. Same, obviously. My dad. <laughs> <laughs> I think, that, yeah, I think what he says is, is pretty good. Um I did all that as well. Everybody just deferring <laughs> to me, man. Yeah. Yeah. Sam. Yeah. Sam is very wise. As you can very tell. He is Sam wise. Like we said in the uh, episode one of season two, he's the leader. <laughs> man, shut up. Let Tony talk. He is Let the Tony glue talk. that... Oh. Yeah. yeah. Keep moving forward. <laughs> Meet the Robinsons. I guess to put a cherry on top, your best changes every day. Dang. Ooh. And there's a man on my mission that taught me that. Sometimes your best is getting up. And checking everything to do off, checking everything off your to do list. You're accomplishing everything. Sometimes your best is just getting out of bed. Mm. But the important part is, if your best is just getting out of bed, you don't stay there. So, Fact. do whatever do whatever's necessary to put yourself in positions to experience the joy that's out there for you. Go catch them Pokemons. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Man, well, boys, that was a good episode. That was a great episode. We dropped a lot of wisdom. We went deep. We kind of got distracted for a little bit at the beginning, but it's all good. But that's us. That's how it is, man. We, man, our attention span is the best. Anyways, Josh told me my attention span aligns. You know what? I'll say it this time. (laughs) Sam, (laughs) drop that beat. Necesito agua. 
<laughs> I Caramba. Uh, actually, Sam, drop the real beat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, One of the best songs we ever made. Dude. Oh, yeah. Pringles, baby. In the morning. You already know. You already know. The vibes. The vibes. The vibes. Uh, Thanks, y'all, for watching. Catch you next week on hey. the next episode of the Room 101. Y'all already know. What did we say, Tonu? Oh. Keep the. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Sam. Peace of mind and. Keep going. Right. Yeah, keep oh, on. Oh, oh, go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, Jay. Oh, keep that peace of mind and keep on. I'll never get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Love y'all. Deuces. Nice.